Uh, the letter asks that the committee look into whether these materials were properly gathered, uh, whether they were properly masked or unmasked, uh, and properly disseminated. Uh, all matters which are within the ordinary course of the committee's responsibilities. Um, we have sent the White House a reply. Um, I am more than uh, willing to come to the White House at the earliest opportunity to review the materials. Uh, I did make clear in my letter, however, uh, that it will be ultimately necessary to share these materials with the full committee, uh, and we will need their cooperation as well uh, to work with the agencies who have custody of the original documents. Uh, when analyzing questions of whether something is properly the subject of incidental collection or whether it was properly unmasked or the distribution list is appropriate, uh, that is impossible to do without consulting the agencies to find out how the materials were gathered uh, and why there was a need to know in case of uh, any unmasking of names. This is not something that is going to be apparent on the face of the documents. It's also not something that I think either chair or ranking member alone can somehow adjudicate. I did express uh, in my reply to White House counsel, though, my profound concern with the way these materials are being made available to the committee. Um, on the same day that the New York Times broke a story saying that the source of the materials that were provided to our chairman was, in fact, uh, uh, National Security Council staff, uh, I was informed in a letter from White House counsel that White House, uh, excuse me, National Security Council staff found these materials in the ordinary course of business. Uh, now, that timing concerns me. Um, if, in fact, the National Security Council staff that discovered these materials uh, reportedly in the ordinary course of business are the same National Security staff that provided them to the chairman to be provided to the president. It raised a profound question why they were not directly provided to the White House by the National Security staff uh, and instead were provided through a circuitous route involving the chairman. Um, if that was designed to hide the origin of the materials, uh, that raises profound questions about just what the White House is doing uh, that need to be answered. And I have asked the White House for their assistance in answering those questions as well. Um, the third point I want to make, uh, in addition to what will be necessary to answer the questions the White House has asked us to look at in terms of the minimization procedures, that um, we will look into that. Um, we want to find out also uh, if, in fact, these are the same materials or a subset of the same materials earlier provided to the chairman, why that circuitous method, to use uh, a diplomatic term, um, was employed to provide them to the committee. Uh, and finally, I want to make one point very clear as well. This issue is not going to distract us from doing our Russia investigation. If that's the object here, it will not be successful. Uh, we are going to look into everything the Russians did to influence our election. We are not going to be deterred. Uh, we're not going to be distracted. Uh, issues of incidental collection are important. They are a part of our ordinary oversight, and we will oversee them. Uh, but we are going to get to the bottom of just what the Russians did and how they did it, uh, and whether there was any coordination or collusion with U.S. persons, including those associated with the Trump campaign. That work is going to go on regardless. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Mr. Ranking Member, can you clarify for us, it says here in the beginning of this letter, in the ordinary course of business, National Security Council staff discovered documents that we believe are responsive to your March 15th letter. You do not know if these are the same documents that the chairman reviewed on White House grounds last week? Uh, well, none of us have any way of knowing. I think only the White House knows the answer to that question, and we should ask them. Uh, I have to say it is uh, highly concerning to me that on the same day that this New York Times story reports, and I don't know whether the New York Times sources uh, are, are accurate about whether the, the two people mentioned that story, but the fact that Sean Spicer yesterday had no idea um, who may have been involved uh, in that uh, review by the chairman, today they suddenly do, uh, uh, you know, raises a lot of uh, very difficult questions for the White House. Um, but again, we need to get to the bottom of whether these same staff that discovered these materials in the ordinary course of business, according to the White House, um, we're trying to use a circuitous method of delivering them back to the president. Uh, that obviously would be deeply disturbing. Sure, sure. When you, know, yes. you say that you will not be distracted by all of this, but 
that already appears to be the case. Your investigation is effectively ground to a halt because of all of these questions and because of a lot of politics. How can the American public still have confidence in this investigation? Well, there's no question that there is a cloud uh, over uh, the investigation as a result of the, the way the materials were provided, uh, if indeed we're talking about the same documents here. Uh, what I'm saying is, and I speak for the Democrats on the committee, I hope I speak for the Republicans on the committee, this is too important not to go forward. Uh, we are determined to go forward whatever obstacles are put in our way. Uh, I've been very frank about uh, uh, what I consider some of the conflicts here. Um, ultimately, it's up to the speaker uh, who conducts this uh, investigation on the GOP side. Um, I can only uh, be responsible for what we do on the Democratic side, but we're not going to be distracted. Uh, we're going to uh, continue to uh, call witnesses, uh, and we have the representations of the majority that they will support the witnesses that we want to hear before the committee. Uh, we're going to go forward, but, uh, you know, as... Uh, Significant as this is now, uh, there's just no way we can allow uh, the investigation to be uh, deterred from the much more important uh, issues at stake. Mr. Chairman, when, yes. when, when you met with Mr. Nunes today, did he reveal anything about you know, the source of the information, whether the White House had any involvement of in getting him onto the White House grounds, or the two names revealed by the, by the New York Times today, Ezra Cohen Blotnick and or Michael Ellis being involved? Uh, you know, we didn't get into any level of detail on that issue. Our focus during our conversation was um, how do we go forward in terms of the witnesses that we want to testify? How do we go forward in terms of the hearings that we had scheduled that were canceled and getting the hearings back on track? Uh, that was really the length and the breadth of our discussion. Um, as I mentioned earlier, obviously not an easy conversation at the moment, um, but uh, you know, this work has to go on, uh, and, um, you know, I'm prepared to work with ever, whoever I need to uh, to make sure that we get to the, to the bottom oh, line Mr. here. Schiff, I just want to clarify one thing. Yes. Is there any, impact, is there any uh, headway in resolving this impasse over bringing uh, AG, uh, Deputy AG Yates or FBI Director Comey back? It's my understanding that you're withholding your signature from a letter uh, inviting Director Comey back, uh, some leverage uh, over scheduling an open hearing. Is there any... Uh, progress on resolving this impact? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say uh, we're withholding anything. We signed the letter uh, that the chairman wanted. We've invited directors Comey and Rogers to come back and testify in closed session. We have also presented a letter for the chairman's signature inviting Sally Yates, directors Clapper, and Brennan to come back. Uh, the chairman uh, has yet to sign that letter. Letter. I hope that he will. Uh, I think that would be certainly in the interests of the public. Um, the White House has made clear now they want Sally Yates uh, to testify. We want Sally Yates to testify. I think she's fully prepared to testify. Uh, so the only obstacle at this point is the signature of the chairman, and we hope that we get that. Uh, Jeff, I want to make sure I understand this correctly. You wrote a letter first, or they wrote a letter to you from the White House Council? Uh, the White House Council uh, wrote a letter to us uh, that uh, I think the President's press secretary referred to in his press conference. Uh, we received that. Uh, effectively simultaneous with him announcing it during the press conference. Uh, and, and that letter invited the chair and I to, uh, in response to questions I had raised, uh, to review these materials. Um, but again, we've accepted. I'll go read them. I look forward to it. Um, it is ultimately going to be necessary if the White House really wants us to answer the questions they've raised for the full, full committee to look at this, uh, not just the ranking and chair. Uh, and we'll need the support of the agencies because they will be the repository of the information about how the materials were gathered and, and what the procedures they followed. And you, and you have a sense of when you would go into this, and would you do this in the same format as the chairman did? You know, it's a little vague as to what format he saw or what setting at the White House he saw these. Would you do that in the same format, or, or is that unknown? Well, I, again, I have no idea what format the chairman viewed them or even what materials the chair has viewed. Uh, one of the questions I asked the White House in my responsive letter is, are these the same materials? Uh, and, of course, if these are the same materials or any subset of them are the same materials, uh, why weren't they presented uh, um, in a more transparent way to the committee? Uh, that's the diplomatic way of putting it. Uh, so. A lot of unanswered questions. I think the letter that I got from White House counsel um, 
certainly raises far more questions than any it answers. Uh, and among the most significant questions at the moment is, are these the same White House staff that uh, reportedly discovered them in the ordinary course of business? And if they are, they just walk down the hall uh, or across the plaza and they can present it to the White House staff or the President himself um, at any time. Uh, so why all the cloak and dagger stuff? Um, and that's something that we need to get to the bottom of. I hope we'll get the White House cooperation on that issue as well. There's no timeline when you go down. Well, I'm ready to go any time. Uh, and oh, if the Friday? I'm, I'm happy to go tomorrow. If they're ready tomorrow, I'm ready to go tomorrow. Okay. Um, do you think over the course of his statements on the matter, the chairman has revealed any classified information? And do you think that uh, the House Ethics Committee should be investigating that matter? You know, I don't know the answer on the classification issue. I don't want any involvement in any ethics questions. Um, you know, I, I have a investigation to try to run uh, as the minority ranking member, and, and I'm keeping my focus on that. So uh, that's not an issue I want to get into. Sir, do you want to share yeah. What came from your conversation with Chairman what, what, what is the way forward? How do you see it? Well, you know, we certainly had a hiatus from the hearings this week. Uh, but at the same time, the work didn't stop. Uh, we were in the process uh, and still are of reviewing, you know, the quite voluminous materials, uh, as well as in developing our witness list. And we have finalized a initial witness list. Now, the way these investigations work, you start out with a set of witnesses that you want to interview first. Uh, that leads you to more information to further witnesses. So this is not the last or the final or the comprehensive witness list. But uh, we did discuss about whether we could come to agreement uh, on the witnesses we both want to bring in. And I think that uh, we've made a lot of progress uh, on that score. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we had a long discussion about the hearing that was canceled and how to get that hearing scheduled once again. Uh, it is my hope that the chairman will uh, reschedule the hearing that uh, he postponed. You know, according to the chair, uh, the only holdup was he wanted to have this closed hearing first. So we'll have the closed hearing first, uh, and that will remove, I think, any obstacle to going forward with the, ha the hearing we had already committed to doing. Yeah, is that officially going to happen next week? Uh, you know, I don't know uh, when that will happen. Mr. Ranking Member, um, were there any concerns? I know you have talked about Sally Yates and Republicans potentially not wanting her to testify. Are you aware of any other concerns from, say, for example, the CIA as it relates to John Brennan or any of the other witnesses? Has the administration expressed any concerns about them testifying in an open hearing? No, I'm not aware of any concerns about that. And, and you know, uh, Directors Clapper and Brennan have testified frequently in open session. And um, I think uh, Senator King uh, said, you know, quite uh, articulately today, how important it is that this investigation be done, not just in private, but also in public, because uh, I think he's quite right to point out, if we do this entire investigation in private, and ultimately we reach a conclusion, even if we're able to agree on that conclusion, it's not going to have the public's confidence. If they're not part of this investigation, if they're not read into as much as they can be read into, they're not going to have much confidence. It's going to look like some backroom deal. Uh, so we really need to uh, be sure that as much of this we can do publicly, we should. Obviously, a lot of it we can't do publicly and, and of necessity. But there's no reason why Sally Yates can't testify in public. Yeah. Speaker Ryan said this morning that the chairman his source was a whistleblower type person. Did the two people describing the New York Times article sound like whistleblowers to you? Um, you know, it certainly doesn't uh, sound at all like what I would consider a whistleblower. We have procedures for whistleblowers to come to the committee. Uh, when they come to the committee, they are protected. They provide whatever materials or information they have, and they're protected. That procedure wasn't followed here. Uh, and if we're talking about not people from the agencies, and again, I don't know whether the Times has it right or has it wrong, but if we're talking about National Security Council staff, um, they can go to White House counsel. Uh, there are already mechanisms and places they can go to share this information. Uh, and if the object here was to give it to somebody to give to the president, it makes it all the more bewildering why it wasn't just taken directly by, to the president, particularly you know, if one of those individuals uh, is the uh, director of intelligence at the National Security Council, they have frequent access to the president. They don't need our chairman.
to deliver something to the president they can deliver themselves. And obviously, uh, so to me, this looks like nothing like a whistleblower case. Uh, and, and again, I think the White House needs to answer, is this instead a case where they wish, wish to uh, effectively launder information through our committee uh, to avoid the true source of the information? Uh, that question the White House really needs to answer. Sir, do you want to all this? Yes. You know, I have to say, we've been a bit overtaken by events during the day. Um, we have our witness list, they have theirs, so we have exchange witness lists. My understanding is that uh, there is a lot of uh, common agreement, uh, and we may have something more to say by the end of the day, but uh, frankly, uh, as in every day in this investigation, you wake up and you think it's going to be one kind of day, and it turns out to be quite a different day. Um, so that is something we're still focused on. and. And we'll try to resolve it not today, then tomorrow. Are you taking steps? Oh, sir, to the, two, the two individuals in the you mentioned in the New York Times story, do you, does the committee want to speak to those people or interview them in any way, your staff and the minority? Well, uh, you know, I certainly think that we need to get to the bottom of whether this was uh, some um, stratagem by the White House. Uh, obviously, that would be deeply concerning uh, to us. Um, and if it's necessary for us to interview, uh, these two individuals, then we should do so. Um, but uh, I, I have to say I'm, I'm uh, more than perplexed by how these materials have been put forward uh, and the motivations behind it. Uh, and I do think that uh, the White House has a lot of questions to answer. Um, uh, so we're going to do our best to find out. And why do you think you, the invitation was extended to you today in the, in the manner that it was, you know, right after the New York Times story came out? Well, you know, uh, the timing certainly looks fortuitous, uh, and and probably more than fortuitous. But uh, it, it, per the letter, it said that the ranking member had been asking to review these materials, which of course I have. Uh, that suggests, of course, that these are the same materials that the chairman has reviewed. Um, and if that's the case, it begs the question, why all the subterfuge, uh, if that's what it was? Um, Maybe there's an innocent explanation here. I don't understand it. Uh, but I, I hope that they'll have an explanation for just why uh, they've used this path to provide materials to the, to the committee. But, sir, so you're suggesting it, but you're not saying it. I mean, do you personally believe the White House has been working with Chairman Nunes to undermine and undercut this, inve this investigation? Uh, you know, uh, the only thing I, the, I'll say is, Again, you know, trying to keep the focus on, you know, what's the best route to doing a credible investigation. If there's been a substantial question about whether we can do that, um, then, then we need to take whatever steps are necessary to uh, restore credibility to the investigation. Um, and uh, I don't want to speak for the chairman. I think you, you can and have asked him these questions. Um, I do want to try to keep my focus on, okay, what's the path forward here? Um, and, uh, and to do my best to um, cordon off any distraction, uh, keep our uh, eyesight on what's truly at stake here. Um, and again, you know, I think uh, this is, I'm sure, quite mystifying to the country. People need to appreciate the context. Uh, the context is we had a foreign power intervene in our election. Um, this is not about whether that was decisive or not. It doesn't matter. Uh, they intervened uh, in a very significant way. Our intelligence community has concluded, not Democrats and not Republicans, but the entire intelligence community, the Russians will do this again and indeed, indeed are doing it right now in Europe. Um, we need to understand what they've done here. We need to understand if they had help of U.S. persons here. That is the mission. Uh, the rest may be important, but that is the mission. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to uh, keep my focus on that mission. When we run into obstacles, and we ran into a huge obstacle this week with all of this, uh, I want to be candid about whether I think um, it poses a, a problem in terms of the credibility of our investigation, and it has. Uh, but at the same time, um, 
I want to keep it as laser like a focus I can on making sure that we get the investigation done. Can the credibility be restored? Yes. The Times report said that um, these communications were between two foreign targets. What effect do you think that could have on uh, the chairman's allegations? Uh, I don't know whether, uh, I don't know anything about the materials yet. Uh, so I'm not in a position to say whether these were uh, intercepts between foreign parties. I, I just don't know. I don't even know if these are intercepts. Uh, so again, um, uh, I'm in the either enviable or unenviable position of not knowing what these materials are. Um, but uh, I think people need to understand um, the process of figuring out uh, how these were collected, whether properly collected, whether properly disseminated, whether properly masked or unmasked. We look at these kind of issues all the time. This is not new for our committee, which is why it makes it so unusual, irregular, um, that it would be presented to us in this way. This is within our ordinary wheelhouse. There is a proper way to put this before the committee. That certainly was not followed here. Uh, and the White House ought to explain why that wasn't followed here. Um, but there is a good way to answer these questions, and we will do our best to answer these questions. But we will not lose sight of the Russia investigation, and, uh, and we are going to keep focus on that. Uh, yes. Has there been any um, uptick in attacks on your or your staffers' computers or IT 